Hey, what is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back. This is Chimera Elite, and today we're talking about my favorite units of the Undead Army, and they're also the last of the Undead Army, so we're actually coming to a close, but let's just get into this and start on a high note. The Tier 1 Dark Vassal. 72 AP for movement. Very, very reliable. Decent damage, decent parry, good dodge, good accuracy good toughness great stats all around nothing is lacking here he has living dead fear 11 righteous and loyal now righteous you have plus one accuracy bonus to everyone who's not darkness of the darkness affinity loyal gives all units even if they're iconoclast Faith points at the beginning of the turn if you're in their faith zone but it's so useful if you're actually using iconoclasts and you have this guy just sitting in the back giving them a faith point inversion get fucked it's amazing what you can do with it and his two abilities are taunt and martyr martyr is like the tier one sparklings ability Lo um i forget the name but it's essentially the faith version of that. Devotion. Devotion hits you for, with a damage roll of 6. You give 2 points of mana. Martyr is the same thing. You get 6 damage roll, and whoever you're using it on gets 2 faith points. It's the same idea. Now, Taunt is seen pretty much everywhere. And what it does is it has a range of four hexes and minus three accuracy and minus three damage if whoever you're taunting doesn't attack you. And it's just the tier one alone is an extremely good unit. He's tanky, relatively tanky. He has good accuracy, good damage. He's just everything you're looking for in a unit. Now, again, admittedly, he is a little bit expensive. But, it's worth it. It's worth every single point that you spend on him. Now, the tier 2 is 81 AP, Armed Fist of the Scourge, 4 movement, 81 AP. Same accuracy, better damage, lowered parry, and toughness. He's more offensive-based. He's Living Dead, Fear, but he also has Righteous and Master Fencer. Now, what those do, Master Fencer allows you to re-roll... A failed attack roll which is fantastic and he also has righteous meaning he doesn't just have an accuracy of 13 he's usually gonna have an accuracy of 14 meaning he's gonna hit pretty much everything he swing at he's reliable good damage and along with that you also have master strike which is plus four damage minus four accuracy so you're just swinging as hard as you possibly can and I, it's so useful just to have an extra like, okay, I know I can hit this, but I want to get a little bit more damage out of it. Master Strike, just boom, boom, offensive stance, you're golden. And I, I, I can't think of anything bad about this guy, other than he only has a movement of four hexes, but so does the rest of the army. So it's really just using what you have and what the tier one and the tier two have oh my god they have it in spades now the tier three is the actual technical tank of the undead the shield of the scourge is 93 ap has four movement and his accuracy dodge and toughness have stayed the same but his parry has been increased to 13 and his damage and will have been reduced to 9 and 11 respectively now, as usually, just with undead units, will doesn't really matter, and even less so with the Shield of the Scourge. He has Living Dead, Fear 13, and Righteous. Now, Righteous and Living Dead are, they seem kind of redundant, but against the Chimera, with her Hyperion effect, you're immune to that. You don't have to worry about that, because you're immune to all of your effects. And you get the same accuracy bonuses against the Light or Destiny associated units. However, 
two extremely important additions have been made. You have parry, meaning that the enemy has to make two successful attack rolls against you. The first one, even if it hits, has to be re has to be rerolled. And it's 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 really good. It's really really good. And along with that, you have hard boiled. So all damage suffered by this unit is decreased by three, meaning that that toughness of twelve. Okay, we factor that into your tier to the amount of damage you take, but if you also factoring in hard boiled, have fun just standing in front of whichever DPS unit they have and just just sitting there, pop a defensive stance on him and he's set for the majority of the game. And I I don't use the Shield of the Scourge just because he's a, he's a bit expensive. I'd like it if they toned him down a little bit in the AP. And I actually forgot to mention, he has parry. Meaning that he gets a minus two to parry, but if he were reposts in combat, like he managed to actually parry someone, he gets... Technically, if he reposts once, he gets two. And if he reposts... If he parries twice, he reposts three times. So against the right units, he could be absolutely devastating if they're not paying attention. But just the paladins in general, even I even though I have some slight misconception, not misconceptions, but just I'm slightly tentative on recommending the tier three. Even him, he's not a definite no. He's still good in his own way. He's a bit, he's obviously expensive, but hey, you can work around that however you want. And uh, each of the paladins, I have I, I run two in my army right now. I have a tier one and a tier two. One slightly defensive, one's more on the attack side. It's and because I actually like Kane, I'm actually buy him soon, sometime soon. And there's just something about the paladins about having a really reliable, tough, damaging unit that just has everything I really want. I have one for damage. I have one for taunting. I've got Kane for more damage and more debuffs, and it's just so many things that make up these the paladins. That's what makes them so nice, in my opinion. That's what makes them so good, and that's why I I've always been drawn to them as a sim just a simple unit. They're tough, and they're worth comes from their ability to do things. Sure, they're a little slow when, when compared to the Wolfen, but even then, they are they can just do so much, and you can send them off to do something, and unless they have overwhelming odds, they're probably going to be able to get it done, and get it done well.
the gameplay in the background is me facing an Emmerich, and it is, he has a decent composition of his team, of his army. But, I have one huge complaint. And also an admission that, yes, the Gargoyle did absolutely shit. I shouldn't have moved him out so quickly. But that's not the point. Near to the end, about 16 or so minutes in, 15 minutes in, he pops Mortal Insolence. Now what Mortal Insolence does is it drops your parry to zero, but you ignore all damage directed towards you. You also gain back 10, count it, 10 health at the end of your turn. Or at the end of the whole round. He gains back a total of 29 health. 29 health over the span of that one turn. So he goes from he goes from four, from like 9 health to full health in one turn. That's a huge glitch that the developers really need to pay attention and like this is broken. Like Emmerich is currently glitched and broken. Fix it, please, because it's something that really detracts from the game being fun. He played well, but, and this isn't a rant of like, oh no, I should have won. And I, it's going to sound like it, but I should have won. When Emmerich is down to 9 health, alright, he should have been up to 19 health, not 40. If he, if he, if a, he'd only had 19 health, I'm not saying I would have won, but I'm saying that I would have had a better chance at it. I shouldn't be, ha I shouldn't have to fight glitched enemies. And admittedly, I use Wolfen, but keep him also in mind, I haven't used Wolfen in a very long time. I also, well, not directly, but I don't run the full Tri-Guardians of Equilibrium, two healers, and just that whole crazy shit, and it's, that's just stupid in my opinion. It's not fun. Jack Blood runs that, and he can do whatever he wants. I'm, I'm sure a lot of the other high-ranked uh, Wolfen players also run that, because it's easy, and you can just destroy people with it. I've beaten it once. Once. And I was using two Guardians of Equilibrium myself. The Cyanide Studios needs to get their shit together and patch this game. Patch the bugs that you know are in it that there's video evidence of. If I don't have it, I don't know, message me. Post it on the forums. And let me just, I don't know, message me or Astroworm. I'm sure he wouldn't mind. I'm sure he's probably already found it. Just please, please patch the game. There are problems that need to be fixed. enjoy this video if you did you know what to do you know the drill by now but this is actually the last of the in-depth videos for now until they either make changes to the units like fix the glitches that many units have that many abilities have or they come they come out with new armies but until then i will probably be only uploading one dogs of war video a week 
and I'm going to be focusing on two other things, college and the Arclash Legacy videos. I'll see you guys around. Peace.